of my Razcog cart, uh, the one that I use to store all my tools. Now my craft room is pretty big and so I found what works best for me is to have tables in the center of the room and then to have this Razcog cart that I can kind of roll around the room wherever I'm sitting and uh, I'll have all my tools available. So it's really funny because I've had so many different configurations of craft rooms. I've done an L-shaped room where I had an L-shaped table or desk. I've done the U-shape. And uh, anything, anytime I have a desk or a table that's against the wall, I tend to stack things and have a lot of clutter. And I, when I finally came to the realization that if I had a table in the middle of the room and I didn't store anything on that table, that I was able to keep my surfaces clean so that when I wanted to do a project, I had a space to work. And so this works really well for me. I don't know if this will work for everyone, but I find that if I have my tables in the center of the room, then um, they stay clean. Now, they don't stay clean all the time because I get messy and uh, I create huge messes, but I clean up at least once a week. And before I start a project, I clean up my workspace. So I have a, a clean place to start. And what really helps me is having this Razcog cart with all my tools. And uh, I also like that the Razcog cart is on wheels and I can roll it around anywhere in this room and I have my tools close by. So I'm not limited to working in any one area of my room. I can kind of work wherever I decide, uh, you know, that I want to, depending on what project I'm working on and, uh, you know, what products I want to work with in my craft room. And so I do have three different Razcog carts. I have one for my tools. I have one that's a mixed media and stamping cart. And then I also have one that I have my Evolution die cutting machine on. And then I have some embossing folders stored underneath. Now, uh, I've had my IKEA Razcog carts for about eight years. And um, I'm really disappointed that they don't have this teal green color anymore because that is such a pretty color. I wish they would bring that back. But um, I did manage to get two of those. And my third cart I bought later and they didn't have the teal color anymore. So I ended up getting, uh, I think it's either cream color or like a light yellow. I'm not exactly sure of the color, but it's pretty. But I really do much prefer this uh, really uh, pretty teal color. That's my favorite color. So, <laughs> so anyway, I have had a love-hate relationship with my Razcog carts over the past eight years. And it has not been until this past year that I have really grown to love them and to have, you know, figured out how to utilize them so that I can store things in there. I know exactly where everything is and I can get to it very easily. And I just love the way that my tool cart is set up. And I really would like to share that with you guys. Okay, so let me go ahead and get closer uh, to the cart and we can go ahead and start the tour. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Uh, in this top tier, I have tons of tools and adhesives and glues and just everything that I could possibly think of that I would want to have close by my workspace when I'm working on a project. And so I have these little bins that are on the side of my brows cogs, and these came from Ikea. I can't remember what they're called, but uh, any storage bins that I kind of show y'all in this video, if they're available, I will put links to those in the description below. And uh, so I have three of these on the top here, and these are my frequently used tools. Like for instance, in this particular bin, I have my, uh, this is like a knife that I use for washi tape. And then I have some Winka Stella, a white gel pen and some different markers and just things like that. And then in the second bin here, I have my X-Acto knife. And um, this is a really cool tool from Creative Memories. I've had this tool for forever. And uh, I just can't believe how long the Creative Memories <laughs> tool stuff lasts. It's just really awesome. I also have uh, my uh, brad setter and the bone folder and my corner rounder and just tools like that. And that's second bin and then in this third bin I have some adhesives just some uh, glue sticks and uh, glue pens and some scotch tape okay and then directly behind that I have the remote for the TV that I have in my craft room and that's always handy and the nice thing about this rag card cart being on wheels 
is um, everywhere that I go in my craft room where I'm working, if I roll this there, then I'll always have access to my uh, remote. And uh, I also have here my uh, liquid adhesives that I like to use. My favorite has always been, uh, for the past couple years, has been this art glitter glue. I recently purchased this reptile glue from Amazon, and I've been told that it's really similar or almost identical to the art glitter glue, and so I haven't tried it yet. I just got it uh, a couple days ago, but I want to uh, try that out. I also have some foam tape, and then this is just some adhesive in a fine line um, applicator bottle. And then I have some Heidi Swap Color Shine. And then uh, in this middle bin here, now this bin is from the, I think that's from, I think it's from Michael's. It's like a little bin. I don't think they sell those anymore, but really any bin that you can get uh, to kind of contain things really helps. But in this bin, I have things like glossy accents and other adhesives I don't use as frequently. Some of these adhesives, um, I got like this one in a craft kit. And I tried it out and it clogged and I don't really use it too much. It's kind of a lot thicker than the um, art glitter glue. And I really have struggled with my hands. I had carpal tunnel surgery on both my hands and so I don't really have good strength on my hands. And using glue where you have to squeeze really hard just doesn't work for me. It, I guess it's a good glue but um, because the bottle is clogged and it's really hard to squeeze, I don't tend to use that very much. I also have this... Um, mono liquid glue the aqua one and i use that on some projects but this warps your paper pretty bad so i only use it when i'm doing certain types of projects i have some close to my heart liquid glass and this is just like the glossy accents uh, let's see have some masking fluid i should probably put that with my mixed media cart i've been looking for that i should put that in there i'm going to do that <laughs> And then we have the, um, the Tombow Monoluka Glue Multi. Now, this is my favorite glue until I found the Art Glitter Glue, and now I never use this one anymore. So I just have glues and different things like that in this second bin. And I try to keep this one upside down because it makes it easier to use and I don't get as many air bubbles. Okay, so next to the glue, I have some scissors. These are my small scissors. And then I have these uh, blending brushes when I'm using ink and some stencil brushes. And uh, uh, behind that, I have my larger scissors, my ribbon scissors. These are scissors that I have had for a really long time. And I put a piece of ribbon on there so I know that I'm not supposed to use these scissors for anything but ribbon. I have some pencils. Then I have some friction pens. or These are friction markers. Let's see. Um... Behind the pencils and the scissors, I have some scoring tools. And then the rest of the things in the top of this cart are all pens. I have just uh, gel pens and some friction uh, pens. I like to write on cards, but I find that when I'm writing, sometimes I struggle because my carpal tunnel, um, it really makes it hard for me because I'll start writing and then all of a sudden I'll just mess up really bad. And so when I'm given a card, I like to write with the friction pens because if I make a mistake, I can erase it. <laughs> okay, so let me twist this card around and we're going to look at this side over here. On the side, I have these metal rings. These came from Harbor Freight. And I'll put a link in the description below for these. You get four in a pack, I think, and I think they're like $4. So for one of these, I have this ribbon hang tag that I have all my twine hung on. And whenever I'm uh, putting a tag on my scrapbook layout, I will just grab this and I can quickly uh, get a piece of twine to match my project. I also have a ruler here that is magnetic and it just kind of hangs on the side. Next to that hanging on this hook, I have some tools. These are from Stampin' Up! And they're just the um, different tools that you can use. I love this one because it's for distressing. And uh, that one's really fun to use to distress some paper. You can really rough up the edges. Okay, now if we swing around, on the back of the cart, I have this really large container. And I don't remember the name of this one either, but it's from Ikea. And they still have that one available as well. And in this one, I keep things like rulers and my layering guides. I have... Um, the uh, thicker stencils, and then I also keep um, paper towels. 
Now in my kitchen, whenever I get a brand new roll of paper towels, I will use them up until I get them about this size. And then I bring it into my craft room because I really don't like having this huge roll of paper towels, but I do like having paper towels in my craft room. So I like to do that. And then it fits perfectly inside this little bin. Okay. All right. Let me turn this around here. Okay, so in this bin, I have some more uh, adhesives. I have my refills for my ATG gun and just some double-sided tape and uh, some more scotch tape. And in this last bin, I have more tools that I don't use as frequently. And so in here, I have like a rotary cutter. And this is the tool you use when you're trying to clean up like die cuts and get them out of the dies. And just uh, tools that I don't use as frequently as the ones on the front side of the cart. And then if I twist it around one more time. On this I have these. Um, these are like my swatches. I guess that's what you call it. So I have a bunch of uh, shimmers, paints, and sprays. And so I made uh, swatches for that. And also I should probably put this on my mixed media cart as well. And I think I will we'll move that to that one. So just recently, I think about, was it a couple months ago, I took all my paintbrushes and uh, just different things like my palette knives and anything that was mixed media related or stamping related and I moved it to that other cart. And I guess I still have a few things left over here. So I'm going to put that on my other cart. And that'll leave me a hook and so maybe I can uh, find something else to put there. So on this hook, I actually started creating this reference guide. And I got this idea from uh, Lauren Hines at Craft Some Joy, and uh, she made a book of all her, her punches. And so I thought about doing a book, but I think I would probably use this more. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all my punches, and I'm going to punch them out and put them on this ring. And use this as a reference for how all the punches look that I have in my craft room. And I thought it would be really cool because for these ones like the circle punch, I could actually use this to figure out if that would be the right size to punch for something. So I'm going to do that with all my punches. I haven't done it yet. It's a project that's on my list for 2020 um, to organize my punches. But I did get started. I just was kind of playing around and seeing if maybe this might be something I would like to try. So I'm going to be doing that sometime this year. All right. So that's the top tier. And, uh, let me go ahead and move the camera down so that I can share with you the second tier. Okay, so this is the second tier of my cart. And uh, what I found was um, that these refrigerator bins from the Dollar Tree fit perfectly in this Rascog cart. And you can fit four across. And I think they're perfect size to put all kinds of different things. And so what I have here in this first one is uh, different uh, roller stamps and some and an ink pad and so when I want to work with my roller stamps I just take this whole bin out and I can use things and then when I'm done I just put it right back in there like that so I think these are awesome and it makes this Razcog cart so much more functional because I can actually uh, get to everything that's in the second level and then so in the second one here I have some distress inks that I use sometimes on my projects and some project life cards. And here's the uh, information for that fridge bin. It's called, it's from Essentials and it's called the fridge storage bin. And that is from the Dollar Tree. So I can just put that back in there. Now this third one has punches in it. This one's a little bit heavy, but I can still lift it out. I have to use two hands to keep the cart from moving. But um, this has punches, and I just keep my most frequently used punches in here. And in the front, I have this whole reinforcer punch, and then this is a little heart punch. And uh, so I can access these by just reaching into the bin and taking one out. I don't really need to take the bin out, but I just wanted to show you that you can do that. And having these four bins here uh, makes this storage really awesome. And I can just reach in here and grab one of these punches. I don't have to pull the whole thing out. I can actually see all of the punches because there's a label at the top here. And I can tell exactly what they are. Now, if you wanted to, you could take these bins off 
so that you could see it more easily. And I'm going to do that, but I wanted to show you that you can access all of the things in that middle tier without taking those bins off. And then in this last bin, I have more punches uh, that I use. I have some smaller punches in the front and then some larger punches in the back. So let me go ahead and spin this around again. And while we have it on the side here, I'm just gonna share with you, I have this tin right here. These are magnetic spice jars from Ikea and I don't think they sell these there anymore. Uh, but this one I have some glue dots and in this one, I have some refills for my tiny attacher stapler. Uh, now, if we spin this around some more, all I have in the back here, there's just really a little bit of space. I have this Ranger uh, ink pad in the back, and it just fits perfectly right there. And that's all I have from the back. So I really don't need to access this second level from the back. I mean, I could if I wanted to, but I don't really... Uh, necessarily need to access it from the from the back. I just more look at that from the front. Okay. All right. So let me spin this around and then I'm going to reset the camera so I can share with you the bottom tier. So what I have on the bottom here are things I actually reach for really often. And um, you might think, why would I put it at the bottom? But it just works really well down there and uh, it just fits perfectly. So I have my ATG gun in the corner here and it just fits perfectly right there on the, on the corner and I can just reach in and get it out. I also have this Martha Stewart circle cutter that I use all the time on my scrapbook layouts. And so um, those are really uh, handy and it's really easy to get them in and out of the cart. They just fit perfectly right there. Now next to that, I have a box of tissue and um, I'm always having to use tissue. I have allergies and um, so I always like to have that close by and having it in this cart means that it's always close to wherever I'm working. Okay, next to the box of tissues, I have my reference guides. These are my reference guides for my paper all my paper pads, 12 by 12, 6 by 6, 6 by 8, no matter what size it is, I have it in these reference books and I have them sorted into categories. And I have pictures of each of my um, different paper pads that I have in my craft room. And how I can tell where to go in my craft room to get it is that on the opposite side of the page, I have written there the location in my craft room where this paper pad is stored. Now I have a video on how I created this and how I organized my paper pads. And if you're interested, I'll put a link in the description below for that video. So I have two of these books. One of these is by the rainbow. This is kind of by color schemes, like brights, darks, pastels, and different uh, colors. And then I also have some categories like retro and vintage. And then in the other book, I have themes like seasons, backgrounds, travel, uh, boy, girl, dog, cat, celebrations, just different categories like that. And I shared all the categories in my other video, so I won't go over that here. Next to that, I have another um, one of these reference guides. Now, this reference guide actually has uh, digital collections that I have available. So if I wanted to, um, you know, use a particular collection and I only have the digital version available, I would know exactly all the ones that I have and I can go and print those out from my computer. So that is kind of all the um, reference guides. Now I have that in a bin. I'm trying to do this with one hand. It makes it a little bit hard. <laughs> I have those in a bin. This is a bin from uh, Michael's. It's like one of those little, uh, I think it comes in a pack of two and it's a light green color. And um, I think we'll see it better from the other side. And then the last thing I have here, I need to make a better cover for that book. It's just cardstock and it keeps falling off. But I'm going to do that one of these days. <laughs> what I have here, this is my uh, personal trimmer from Creative Memories. I've had this trimmer for over 20 years and I love it. And I use it every time I scrapbook to cut my pictures. And so I have that stored right here in this corner. Isn't that awesome? I just love that bottom row. And then I think a lot of times people get frustrated because they can't figure out what to put on the bottom and it's hard to get to it because the clearance from the top of this bin to the bottom of that bin is very shallow. I mean, you don't have much room there. 
Okay, I'm going to turn this around so we can check out the other side. And um, down here at the bottom, I have some more of those bins from Ikea that hang on the side. And these are awesome. <laughs> and because these are on the bottom, they don't, um, you know, I couldn't really put them here because then I wouldn't, it would be hard to access the things on that bottom row. But putting them on the very bottom is perfect. And I have things here like my crocodile and um, some scissors, my friend's scissors, things that I don't use as frequently, but or items that I might want to use, my tiny attacher. I have some tools like uh, screwdrivers and uh, pliers and uh, wire cutters and a flashlight. And uh, that's where I keep that stuff. Now, I think you can see down here, this is the other side of that bin. I have my reference guides on that side and I have a little bit of room left over. So I have my erasers and my pencil sharpener there. And then I have one punch. And then uh, the only other thing that's in this bottom tier is some more punches. I have a couple of border punches and my tag punches from Stampin' Up! And then some other punches that I like to use frequently. So I forgot to share with you one thing that I keep stored on the bottom of this Razclaw cart. And it's tucked right behind this box of tissue. I have this little storage box. And this came from Michael's. And inside this little box, I have just things that I sometimes occasionally need. Like the uh, refills for my Fiskars trimmer. Some pens if I lose a pen for my art glitter glue. And then I also have the magnets for my scrap and easel. And some uh, staples. And so I just keep this here. In this bin, it's really easy for me to access, um, but it is kind of hidden in there. So unless I'm looking for it, I kind of forget it's back in there. But it is still easy to get to, and uh, it, I like to have this close by, and it's a great container to store things in this Razcog cart. I also wanted to share with you that I have um, this little green bin from uh, Michael's. I have one of those going uh, this way. Uh, that has these three books and then on the other side has the uh, pencil sharpener and erasers and I didn't mention this when I was showing you the punches but if I roll this around on the other side um, this bin I have another one of those little green uh, bins from Michaels and that's how these punches are kind of staying upright in there so let me just take a couple of these punches out and I think you can see um, the bin that's there. It's uh, like a light green color. And I will put a link to the uh, bin from Michaels as well as the ones from Ikea. Uh, so that if you're interested in uh, getting those, you'll have those available. That'll be linked in the description below. So I'm really happy that I finally figured out how to utilize this cart so that I can love it again. And I hope that um, by sharing this with you guys out there, that you can get some ideas of what kind of things you can store in your Razcog cart. And I just love having this mobile workspace with all my tools that I can roll around my room. It's just awesome. So anyway, that's all I have for this video today. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. And if you did, please give this video a like. And if you would like to see more, please subscribe. And we'll see you next time. Bye now. Hey girls, what you doing? Are y'all being good? Are you gonna go on the tour with me when I tour my brass cart today? <laughs> I think they think it's treat time. Is it treat time? Yeah? Is it treat time, Lily Bell? They got a haircut the other day and their hair is super short. <laughs> I guess I should go give you a treat, huh? Think so? You think I should give you a treat, Miss B? Can you sit? No? <laughs> no, it's too hard. Okay. Sit. I don't have a treat in my hand. I guess that's why y'all are not obeying me, huh? Can can you sit? No? <laughs> well maybe you shouldn't get a treat because you're not listening to me. <laughs> I know it.
what you're saying. You're saying, come get me a treat right now. I want one right now. 